J5 the pendulum hitting a block. So in this case, we have a pendulum. We're going to bring it up to 90 degrees and then down here on the on the ground there's a mass and this is going to swing down and smack into mass 2. Here's mass 1. This would be 1 kilogram. This one here is going to be 2.5 kilograms and 120 centimeters. It's going, to, it's going to come down and hit this and there's no friction here. All right. And we could take that to be 120.0. So you're going to come out here with 90 degrees and let go. This is the length of the pendulum, 120 and 120. So now we can use the formulas that we derive for the case where the second mass is at rest and the first mass is moving. So it's going to be down here where this is U1 going that way, it's gonna smack into this, and then what are the final velocities? Well, the formula for the final velocities that we derive, which we can look up, these do not need to be memorized, all right? We have here for V1 and for V2, two M1 over the sum, times u1. So first part of the problem is to find u1, but we can find u1 by conservation of energy. We're at here a height h, which is equal to L. So we have potential energy m1 gl. And when we get down here, we're gonna have kinetic energy one half m1 u1 squared. Notice that when you have the perpendicular the tension tension here perpendicular to the direction of motion there's no work done so we don't have to worry about uh, work energy theorem here that's going to be complicated we're just going to simply use mg8 for the work energy theorems the height and the work that you do in coming down is like falling it's the same it's the same as falling so it's m1gl potential energy at the beginning, plus zero kinetic energy since we're at rest, and then at the bottom it's all kinetic energy and no potential since our reference is down at the bottom where the height would be zero then, down, down there. So what we're saying is that the work energy theorem is with the gravity. Uh, this tension, since it's perpendicular, doesn't, compl doesn't complicate anything. It just simply changes the direction of the velocity. So this equation here, gets us a cancellation with the masses and we've seen this here already before this is the same as the square root of 2gl 2gh which we did earlier in our other section over here so the height is now l and that is u1 so we can go ahead and figure out what that is that's 2 times 9.8 times 1.2 meters. And with the calculator, you'll get 23.52, take square root, you'll get 4.850 meters per second. I could round off at the end. And then we go to the formulas, like this one here. This, is, this U1 is gonna go in here and it's gonna go in there. And we now plug in the masses. So if we plug in the masses for V1, we get, we said V1, we said M1 is one kilogram. So we have one minus M2 is 2.5. And that's one plus 2.5, the 4.85. And that's gonna give you, when you work that out, you'll get minus 2.1 meters per second. And when you do 
with the second mass, you'll have two times, this is uh, M1, so that's a one. And then we have one plus 2.5. And this will be the 4.85. And that's gonna be 2.8 liters per second. Notice that that second mass takes off, but the first mass reflects back. That's nice.